Well, if the trouble was going to an early movie, you got to come back and face the supper dishes. <laughs> <laughs> but it was such a wonderful picture, though, Mama. Mm -hmm. Oh, that scene where he finally took his sweetheart in his arms and he was singing that song. <sighs> I was just humming it. Well, <laughs> 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 Fill my arms the way you fill my dreams, the dreams that you inspire. With love's own sweet desire, my love for you. Stop this speech and you're cracking the pasta. We were only singing a song from the picture. Singing? Well, I ain't heard a noise like that since I stripped the gears on my 1928 Essex. <laughs> I'll tell you, living in this house with two women can drive a man crazy. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to stand it. Well, don't stand there, Baldy. Go on and open the door. <laughs> Telegram for Miss Ramona Smith. Uh, thank you. That's my mother-in-law. Uh, there's a nickel for you, boy. <laughs> it's a telegram for you, Mama. Yeah? yeah? And incidentally, I tipped the boy. He owes me a quarter. <laughs> <laughs> Why, it's from your sister Hortense in Chicago. Oh! <laughs> oh, how wonderful. Sapphire says here that Hortense is quitting her job teaching in Chicago and is coming here to live in New York. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> she can stay with us. What? Stay with us? She can't do it. And why not? Because two women in this house is bad enough. And I'm sick and tired of sharing my bathroom with wet camisoles. <laughs> now look, George. Hortense is my sister. And she's staying here. Now, Mama, you can move in the room with me. Hortense can have your room, and George can sleep on the couch out in the living room. Oh, honey, <laughs> that's just perfect. At last, I gotta have my baby living here with me. Now, wait a minute. I won't have it. I'm standing up for my right, and I tell you that this worm is not only turning, but is sitting up and snapping. And I tell you, Hortense is staying here. And I tell you that Hortense is not staying here, and I ain't sleeping on no couch, and that's final. George, what kind of a night did you have? Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Good. I hope I didn't disturb you women when I fell off with the couch full time. <laughs> oh, well, now, George, you don't have to get up yet. Hortense is going to fix breakfast, and Mom and I have a little housework to do. But you go right on sleeping and don't have a care in the world. Is it necessary for you to dust my head at this hour of the day? Oh, I'm sorry, George. I didn't realize it. Now go on back to sleep. That's right. Night has flung the stone that puts the stars to flight. You say there's some kid throwing stones out there? Oh, good morning, George. That was Omar Khayyam. Hmm, must be a new kid in the block. I never heard of him. Oh, George, 
George, Omar Khayyam is one of the great poets of literature. Literature? Hmm. Now, look, Hortense, all I try to do is get a little sleep around here. But the sun has arisen awake, for morning in the bowl of night has flung the stone that puts the stars to flight. And lo, the hunter of the east has caught the sultan's turret in a noose of light. Look, Hortense, our damn poor fellas might like to get up early, but I as a late sleeper, and if you don't mind, I'd like to get a little sleep around here. Oh, why, certainly, George, certainly. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Mama, huh? I just happened to think, have you seen my shoulder bag anywhere around here? Yes. I believe I did see it. Thank you. You're welcome, honey. <laughs> okay, okay, you win. I don't mind being dusted and vacuum, but when you come out to bowling with me, I surrender. <laughs> Selfie, ain't you through showering yet? Kingfish? Well, it happened that way sometime, Kingfish, when you got a big family. Yeah, well, I wouldn't, uh, uh, just a second now, you got a string of something on your sleeve there. Another one of them things. I can't understand it, Calhoun. There ain't but three women in the house, and there was at least 30 pair of stockings hanging in the bathroom. They must have legs I don't even know about. <laughs> you know, Kingfish... Ruby met Hortense, and from what she says, she's a nice, cultured, refined gal. Yeah, but three women around the house is just too many. And then on top of that, Hortense ain't contributing one nickel to her board. Yeah, that sounds like dead weight to me. Well, I gotta be getting along, Kingfish. Just be patient. Maybe she'll meet a nice guy, marry him, and move out. See you later. You know, Kingfish... I think Amos got something there. Maybe you could introduce it to some fella and get her married. Uh, what does she look like? That's her. Well, let's try to think up another angle. No, no, Calvin. I think you boys got something there. Marrying her off. Yeah. Yeah. Because you never can tell about people. If you want to do this to some fella, she might grow on him uh, like a fungus. Mm. <laughs> and I think I know the big fat stump to start the growth on. And the brown, huh? Yeah, but there's only one trouble. If Sapphire and her mama find out about this, they'll kill the deal. Because Sapphire wouldn't want Hawkins and Cucumber with Andy. <laughs> well, knowing you, Kingfish, I don't figure you're going to have no trouble with that angle. 
But anyhow, like I told you, that Hortense is a school teacher, and she's been teaching the kids in the fourth grade. Now, in order to make an imprint on Hortense, I've got to bring you up to the intelligence level that she's been accustomed to. Yeah, that's the thing to do, all right. But uh, how are we going to do it? Well, uh, Hortense is always spouting poetry, and so I done bought a poetry book here. Now, Andy, I want you to mesmerize some of it. And when you talk to her, I want you to throw in some of them uh, little uh, bits of wisdom, you know, like Bon Moxa and all that stuff. Right. Well, Andy, you better start off on this in here. I read that. Mm. The Legend of Hiawatha by Henry Wordsworth Longfellow. Hmm, took three fellas to write this, huh? Well, Andy, that's a long poem. Read that first condenser right there. Oh, yeah. On the shores of Ichigumi... Wait a minute, Andy. That's Gichigumi. Oh, yeah. By the shores of Gichigumi... By the shining still deep waters... Stood the wigwam of Nekomas, daughter of the moon, Nekomas. That's a beautiful hunk of stuff there, ain't it, Andy? Okay, Kingfish, uh, when did I do up there? Well, Andy, it just so happened that Sapphire and her mama are going to a movie tonight. And that'll clear the deck for you and Hortense. Well, son, uh, look for you about 8 o'clock. Yeah, well, I'm glad to meet up with an intelligent gal like Hortense. For one thing, it'll stop a lot of the talk that's been going on around here. What do you mean, Andy? Well, there's been a lot of talk going on around town that uh, I ain't very smart, that my head is empty, and this will prove to everybody that there's nothing in it. <laughs> Hold on, Gangfish. See you later. Now, she'll be right out, Andy. Uh, yeah, do I look all right? Oh, you look wonderful. But remember, Andy, I told you she was intelligent, but she's a little on the plain side. Yeah, well, I ain't expecting no Venus de Mildew, you know. Well, Hortense, here he is. I'd like for you to meet Mr. Brown. Oh, I'm very happy to know you, Mr. Brown. Uh, likewise. Uh, oh, I'll bring you a box of candy. Oh. Hey, and Hortense, that's the real mark of a gentleman. Mm, unless I miss my guess, that's the 60 cent a pound quality. Well, here's one with a nut on it. <laughs> oh, thank you very much, Mr. Brown. Would you care to sit down? Oh, yeah, Andy. I'll sit right down here. Yeah, I'll sit right down there, Andy. And I'll sit here. And Hortense, you can sit. Uh-oh. No, Hortense, you sit right here. And I'll sit here. Now, Mr. Brown here is interested in the finer things of life. And I thought you two had a lot in common. How nice. Oh, suppose we just sit around here and discuss the culture aspects of life. Well, that's all right with me. It sounds interesting. Yes, there's nothing like a nice culture discussion. <laughs> by the shores of Gitchigumi, by the shining deep sea waters, stood the wigwam of Columbus. <laughs> Did you hear that, Hortense? Oh, culture just popped out the boy. He couldn't hold it back. He's just full of it. Oh, how exciting. Hiawatha, that's my favorite poem. Oh, uh, well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, like I see, there's nothing like a good uh, culture discussion. You know anything else, Mr. Brown? Uh, well, I, I... Oh, sure, sure. The boy's just full of the stuff. Say something else, Mr. Brown. <laughs> this little piggy went to market. This little piggy stayed home. This little piggy had roast beef, but this little piggy had none. <laughs> Hear that, Hawkins? Oh, how delightful. I just love a man with a sense of humor, Mr. Brown. Well, like I see, I got a little bit of to tend to, so I'll leave you two here alone to spout culture at each other. Well, it certainly was nice of you to bring Mr. Brown over, Brother George. Yeah, and incidentally, Andy, you can spout until, uh, 1115, because Sapphire and her mama has gone to a double feature. Okay, King Z. <laughs> George, have you seen Hortense this afternoon? No, I ain't. I ain't got the least idea where she is. That's funny. You know, Mama, it's 
strange. She's been going out a lot this past week with never a word of explanation. Well, she's over 21, and I guess where she goes is her own business. <laughs> well, I guess you're right, Mama. Besides, Hortense is such a cultured girl. She's probably at the library or the museum or doing something intellectual. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Coochie, coochie, coo. Yeah, the coochie, coochie, coo to you, too. <laughs> you know, Andy, in all my born days, I never thought I'd fall in love with anybody like you. Yeah, well, that goes for me, too, honey. Uh, but getting back to the elopement, uh, you think about 12 o'clock tonight will be all right? Yes, Andy. But I really hate to elope this way without telling Mama and Sapphire. But George thinks it's best. Yeah, well, it is more romantic that way, yeah. Uh, uh, but one thing, Hortense, uh, not that it makes any difference, but uh, that $10,000 you say you'd accumulated while she was working, you planning on throwing that in the matrimonial pot, ain't you? Would it make any difference whether I throw it in or not? Oh, no, no. I love you just the same, but it would be good to know that we had that to carry us over the rough spots. Oh, Andy, we're going to be so happy. Well, King Peach, everything is all set. We will open at 12 o'clock tonight. Well, congratulations, old boy. I hate to see my dear darling sister-in-law leave our happy household, but what's to be must be. Yeah, well, these things will happen, but I'm getting everything ready for the elopement. Lightning is getting the ladder. Now, look, Andy, when you put the ladder up there, don't make too much noise, because Sapphire and our mama will be sleeping in the next room, and we don't want them to know nothing about it yet. Yeah, well, I'll keep quiet, all right. <laughs> well, Andy, I'll see that Hortense is all ready, and I'll see that she gets out the window. Well, thanks, Kingfish. <laughs> but, uh, Andy, I don't guess you'll be going too far on your honeymoon with the limited capital that you got. Well, we won't have to worry about that. Uh, you see, Hortense done saved up $10,000 from working. And uh, we'll have that to fall back on. Uh, you say she got $10,000? Yeah, she ain't told nobody about it except me. <laughs> Holy mackerel. Well, I got to get on back, Kingfish, and take care of the elopement and get everything ready. And if I don't see you before, I'll see you after the honeymoon. <laughs> so long. <laughs> oh, hi, Calhoun. Hi, Andy. I'm in a hurry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, Kingfish. I said, hi, Kingfish. Look, Kingfish. Every time I come in here, something's troubling you. Now, what's wrong? Calhoun, at last I got my sister-in-law and Andy ready to elope tonight. And I find out she come into some money. Well, what's wrong with that? Well, after all these years, somebody in the family come into some money that would practically pay all my household expenses. And here I is, getting rid of them. Well, of all the selfish attitudes I done ever heard of, Kingfish, you ought to be ashamed to yourself trying to break up a beautiful romance. A man who wants a woman for his very own to hold and to cling to. Two people willing to face the world unafraid, the overpowering love of a man who is willing to worship at the feet of the woman he loves. Worship her as he would a shrine. And you... You would break up this beautiful relationship. A relationship where the two hearts should be as one, united, inseparable. But Calhoun, there are $10,000 involved here. He is. Well, how do we get these two crazy people apart? That's what I asked you, Calhoun. Now, wait a minute. Now, let me think here. Uh, I know what to do. Tell Hortense that the elopement plan has been changed. Well, what do you mean? Tonight, when Andy's climbing up that ladder to Hortense's room, you'll be waiting on the inside of the room. Yes, yes. And when Andy climbs up that ladder, the thing for you to do is this. Now, you get this straight, Kingfish. Now, you're sure Andy wants me to meet him at the station instead? That's right, Hortense. You see, Andy got a little nervous about carrying you down that ladder. He afraid he might slip, and he don't want to start off on his honeymoon with a fractured skull. Well, I'd better hurry, because I don't want to keep him waiting.
Look, Lightning. She's got the light on. Lightning, you stay here at the bottom of the ladder for protection. Uh, yeah, I'll hold the ladder, Mr. Andy. Yeah, not only that, in case I drops my bride, why, maybe you can break a fall. Oh, yeah. Uh, careful now, Mr. Andy. Oh, hot air. <laughs> Sandy? I don't know, Lightning. When I call her name, Hortense give me a little love tap. I think my nose is bleeding. Mm -hmm. She really tapped you, all right. Yeah, she was a little over affectionate with that tap. Hold the ladder again, Lightning. Your lover is here. <laughs> like, is this eye closing up on me? This show is a rough moment. <laughs> Look, like, I think we got the wrong part. You go up there and check while I get myself together. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I beg your pardon, but is this the residence of Miss Hortense Smith? Will you please accept these flowers? She took the flowers, Miss Andy. And uh, Miss Smith, Miss Andy said for oh. You know, Lightning. I think I know what's wrong with the whole approach. What you mean, Miss Sandy? Well, Hortense is the more romantic type. She's probably mad at me because I ain't been romantic enough. Yeah, that's the answer, all right. Hold the ladder, Lightning. Uh, hold the ladder. <laughs> By the shores of Gitchegoo. <laughs> Get you in the gloomy. This loafing sure is dangerous. You liable to get hurt. Yeah, I think you're right. One more trip up that ladder and I'll have to elope on the stretcher. There's some road someplace. Yeah. You know something, Lightning? I got a sneaking suspicion that her love done cooled. I was through with her. Come on, let's get out of here. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, George. I waited at the station for Andy for three hours last night, and he never showed up. That's the strangest thing in the world. I can't understand it. Well, all I know is I never want to see him again as long as I live. Now you're doing the smart thing. A man like that ain't worthy of your love. This is the third time a man has disappointed me. George, I'm through with Smith. I'm never going to have anything more to do with him as long as I live. And I'm never going to get married. Hawkins, despite the fact that I's a man, you are doing the smart thing. And after all, why should you get married? You've got a nice home up at our place, and you can stay there just as long as you want. Oh, that's sweet of you, George. And from now on, I want you to consider it your home. All right, George. I will. You know, George, I'm really happy that I'm so welcome there. Because for a while, I thought you wanted me to get married so that I wouldn't be a burden. Why, what in the world ever give you an idea like that? Well, that's what I felt. And as a matter of fact, I tried so hard to get Andy to marry me that I even made up a story about having $10,000 in cash. <laughs> 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 